Hello guys, we are going to continue with the fourth video of Organic Chemistry Chapter 2 where we are going to first begin with how to name an alkene. So below here, I already lie down four steps for you on how to name alkene. Let's have a look one by one of how do we, what are the steps for us to name alkene. So in step one, find the parent chain, one with the greatest number of carbon with C double bond C in it and name the parent chain based on the number of carbon with the smallest number based in C double bond C. So in here, our prioritize in numbering system is based on the C double bond C. Okay. Then in second step, we identify the substituent inside the parent chain. So uh, in here, we also have LQ only. So you have possible methyl, ethyl, propyl, isopropyl, third butyl, and isobutyl, and so on. Uh, okay. So if there are more than one type of substituent, the naming is arranged based on alphabetical order. Then we go to the third step. So if there are more than two similar, uh, if there are more than two similar substituent, a prefix is placed accordingly to the number of substituent. So if two substituent die, three substituent try, four similar substituent tetra, five similar substituent penta, and six similar substituent hexa. And in the final step, now we have already decided in step one about the numbering. So just place the number of the substituent carbon based on the position determined in step one earlier. Okay. So to separate between number and number, you use comma. To separate between number and alphabet, you use a dash. So when I have to, without any hesitation, let's have a look on how do we apply these uh, steps. So for example, if you have this uh, molecule, uh, so how are you going to name this molecule? So first find the longest carbon. So in here, the longest carbon will be C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. So it doesn't have, don't, it doesn't have to be a straight chain, yeah. Okay. So based on the numbering, so this is carbon number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five, number six, and number seven. Uh, so in here, you can see that um, the C double bond C is located in between C1 and C2. So with this, we name as HEP1 in for the parent chain. Okay. So in the second step, we have to identify the LQ. So what are the LQ that we have in here? We have this is a methyl. This is a methyl and this is also methyl. So there's only one substituent. Uh, there's only one substituent, therefore methyl. So no need to arrange based on alphabetical order. Then in our third step, we have three similar methyl. So three similar methyl, therefore we put the prefix trimethyl. And based on the numbering that we had determined earlier, so the methyl is located at number three, number four, and also number five. So therefore the full name is 345 4, 3, 5, one in Okay, as for the second example, if you were given in a condensed formula, so usually we will suggest students to open up the condensed formula first according to like this, then identify the parent chain inside them. So what are the parent chain inside here? So it seems that the parent chain will be a straight chain. Okay, so straight chain with six carbon. So you have six carbon and um, to, in order to identify where is the position of C double one C, you number them lah. One, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. So it seems that the C double one C is located between C two and C three. Therefore, it is hex two in. Okay. We take the smallest number of carbon lah. Okay. Okay. Then in the second step, uh, we have to identify the LQ. So this is a methyl. This is a methyl. This is an ethyl and this is an ethyl. So you have two substituent et methyl and ethyl. So based on alphabetical order, ethyl comes first, only then methyl. Okay. So put something ethyl, something methyl, hex two in. Since there are two ethyl and two methyl, so we put a prefix di ethyl and also di methyl in here. And last but not least, based on the number, the ethyl is situated at carbon four four. So four four di ethyl. 4, 4 diethyl, the methyl is situated at 2nd carbon and 3rd carbon, therefore 2, 3 dimethyl. So the full name will be 4, 4 diethyl, 2, 3 dimethyl, hex 2 in. Okay, okay, so uh, that is the two examples that I can show you. Lah. So more examples you have to try to explore on your own. 
Okay, then I also briefly introduce a little bit about diin and cycloalkene, where both of them will have the general formula of CN H2N minus 2. Okay, so uh, a diin are named after to having two alkene. Okay, where based on the number, if this is C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and C6, so this is a hexadiene. Okay, so this is a hexadiene. So and the C double bond C is located at carbon number one and carbon number five. So therefore one five hexadiene. Then uh, if this is number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, so six carbon also a hexadiene, and the C double bond C is located at C two and C four. Therefore two four di uh, two four hexadiene. So you have three methyl. So therefore, two, three, four, tri methyl, two, four hexadiene. Okay. So the rest of the example, you just have a look and refer to it, lah. Okay. Okay. Then we also have a cycloalkene, which is the structural isomers of the diene. All of them we have the general formula of CnH2n minus two. So this is the most basic cyclopropene. So then in cyclo, uh, in the cycloalkene, it is either C1 or C2. Or C1 or C2. C double bond C must be either C1 or C2. Okay, so for this one we call it as cyclopropene. This one we call it as cyclobutin. Okay, so now this is between either C1 C2 or C2 C1. So no matter what, no matter what lah. So this uh, will be three, four, five. So if you notice very carefully. Uh, it is located methyl is located at the fourth carbon, so therefore four methyl cyclopentene. Okay, now for this case, uh, um, usually the one with the C double bond C is prioritized, and if the C double bond C contain an LQ, let's say in this case it contain a methyl, so methyl will be staying as carbon number one. Therefore, this one must be two, three, four, and five. So in the fifth carbon, you have an ethyl in here. So therefore, the full name is 5-ethyl methyl cyclohexene. Last but not least, you have this cycloalkene, uh, cyclobutene with two methyl in here. So as I told you, if C double bond C with a methyl, it must be carbon number one, number two, number three, and number four. So therefore, one for dimethyl cyclobutene. Okay. So that is how you name a cycloalkene. Okay, so I'll just touch like this only. Okay, finishing about uh, naming, we go to isomerisms in alkene. So alkene can easily exhibit structural isomerism due to the presence of C double bond C. So alkene can also exhibit easily positional isomerism uh, and also chain isomerism and also functional isomerism, where the general formula of alkene and cycloalkenes are the same which is CnH2n. So whenever you propose for C4H8, so you shall have, this is boot 1, this is boot 1 in, okay, and this is boot 2 in, okay, and this is 2 methyl propyl, okay. Now other than alkene, you also have to propose for cycloalkene. So this is a cyclobutane, and this is a methyl cyclopropane. Okay, as if you have C5H10, you have pen 1 in, pen 2 in, 2 methyl boot 1 in, 3 methyl boot 1 in, and 2 methyl boot 2 in. So these are the five, is uh, five isomers of alkene in C5H10. And also, not to forget, you have also cycloalkene. So starting from cyclopentane, the most basic. Moving one carbon to become LQ will become uh, methyl cyclobutane. Moving another carbons to the first carbon will become 1 1 dimethyl cyclopropane. You can also have ethyl cyclopropane and you can also have 1 2 dimethyl cyclopropane. Okay, so these are the 10 isomers for C5H10. Now, uh, other than identifying a uh, Structural isomerism uh, due to the presence of the C double one C, uh, you can also easily exhibit the geometrical isomerism. So, for geometrical isomerism in C4H8, so wood 2 in can exhibit geometrical isomerism. So, you have cis wood 2 in and trans wood 2 in. As for C5H10, 
the one possible structure that have a geometrical isomerism is pentoin. So therefore, you have cis pentoin and trans pentoin. So if you carefully look back at the alkene, there is also one more which can exhibit a geometrical isomerism, which is 1,2-dimethylcyclopropane. So this is a cis 1,2-dimethylcyclopropane. Well, this is a trans 1,2-dimethylcyclopropane. Okay. okay, for an alkene, uh, for, sorry, for an alkene to exhibit even optical isomerism, so you must at least have six carbon in it. So for this six carbon, you can even have optical isomerism. So this is the six carbon C6H12, uh, three methyl uh, pen one in that can exhibit optical isomerism. If you look carefully, this is the chiral carbon atom. So this is how uh, alkene, the minimum number of carbon required lah, for the alkene to exhibit optical isomerism. Okay, okay. And last but not least, a little bit more about physical properties. So generally, when going down to the group, melting point, boiling point increase, density also increase. So here are the explanation. So boiling point alkene increase because um, uh, all of them are simple covalent molecules uh, hold by weak van der Waal forces. So greater molecular mass, stronger the weak intermolecular forces, higher the boiling point. As for the solubility, all alkanes are considered non-polar, so uh, al uh, all alkenes are non-polar, so it does not easily dissolve in non-polar solvent. Uh, sorry, it dissolves easily in non-polar solvent such as benzene and ether, so it does not form hydrogen bond with water, so immiscible with water. Okay, so that is why we call it as a hydrophobic molecule. Sir, okay. Okay, other than that, you can also have a little bit difference between cis, uh, cis and trans uh, boiling point, uh, especially here. Uh. So in cis boot 2 in, it has an overall dipole moment, so therefore it has a greater boiling point. As for trans boot 2 in, so since the dipole cancel off each other, so overall dipole moment is approximately equal to zero, therefore a lower boiling point. Okay, okay so <coughs> this is a little bit about um, cis and trans physical properties and I believe that is all for the fourth video we'll continue on our next lesson see you around thank you <laughs>